Hi and welcome to Economics Week 10. So in this preview, we're going to explore some of the key concepts in the world of economics. We'll delve into topics that are vital for under our understanding moving forward, and those have to do with market structures. So we'll start by unraveling the world of monopolies and the practice of price discrimination. Then we'll delve into monopolistic competition and learn how firms in this market structure operate after that, we'll discuss how firms can compete effectively without restoring to, uh, without resorting, excuse me, to price reduction. And finally, we'll explore the realm of oligopoly and see how a small number of powerful players dominate certain industries. So we'll begin with monopolies and the concept of price discrimination. Monopoly occurs when a single company controls the entire market for a particular product or service. In such situations, the monopolist has substantial pricing power, which they sometimes choose to wield through a practice known as price discrimination. So price discrimination involves charging different prices to different groups of people uh, for the same product or the same service. So why do monopoly, uh, monopolists engage in this practice? We have a few reasons. Number one is maximizing profit. This allows them to extract as much surplus from their customers as possible. Uh, second would be segmentation. So by charging different prices to, to various customer segments, they can cater to consumers with different levels of willingness to pay. For example, airline companies offer different prices for economy class and business class seats. Third would be reducing surplus. Monopolists can prevent reselling or arbitrage by pricing differently for different segments. This way, they minimize the loss of surplus to intermediaries. Now, let's shift our focus to monopolistic competition. This market structure is characterized by a large number of firms, each producing slightly differentiated products. Here are some key characteristics. So, one would be product differentiation. So firms in monopolistic competition produce goods that are similar but not identical. For instance, think of the various brands of toothpaste available in the market. Second, there are low barriers to entry, so new firms can enter the market with relative ease, as there are no significant barriers preventing them from doing so. And third, we have the concept of non-price competition. So instead of solely competing on price, Firms in monopolistic competition engage in non-price competition. This includes advertising, branding, and improved product quality. Moving on to the concept of how firms compete without lowering prices, we can add to our previous point of product differentiation. We can talk about quality improvement. So companies often focus on enhancing the quality of their products or services to justify um, premium pricing. This is evident in the automotive industry with brands like, say, Mercedes-Benz. Third would be through advertising and branding. And fourth would be through customer service. So finally, let's explore the world of oligopoly. So in an oligopoly, a small number of firms dominate an industry. This concentration of power results in some interesting dynamics. So one would be interdependence. Firms in an oligopoly closely monitor and react to each other's actions. This interdependence often leads to strategic decision making. Second would be again, a point mentioned in a prior um, segment would be barriers to entry. So high barriers to entry, such as significant capital requirements or the amount needed to start up a business and compete, make it challenging for new competitors to enter the market. And third, would be price leadership. In some cases, one dominant firm may set the price and others follow suit. This is known as price leadership and it's common in industries like airlines and telecommunications. So thank you. I hope that this was a good brief for the upcoming week and I look forward to working with all of you in class. See you next week.